Please, 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 use lots and lots of sunblock, use good sunglasses, because it's going to be a hot day, and we'll have beautiful weather planned for two days. A timely warning which was certainly not heard this time last year, when the Wood Spring Wings Model Aircraft Club's airfield here at Claverham Drove near Yatton was under several feet of rainwater. This year the forecast was set fair and the enthusiasts were firing up their magnificent flying machines for two days of first class entertainment. First up were a couple of World War II warbirds, a Boeing B-29 Superfortress and an Avro Lancaster bomber. Program, this section was described as an in-flight refueling display, but clearly no actual kerosene passed between these aircraft during the flight. into the air were a couple of real jet aircraft, models of course. This monster was affectionately called the Bronco, or more properly the North American Rockwell OV-10 Bronco, a turboprop light attack and observation aircraft. It was developed in the 1960s. Meanwhile, cleared for takeoff at the end of the runway was another jet aircraft, this time a BAE Systems Hawk, first flown 50 years ago in 1974. 50th anniversary, just clearing the fence at the end. And since 1979, the aircraft used by the RAF Red Arrows display team. The 
permission from Bristol Air Traffic Control is required before the next display is allowed to take off. Three, two, one, ignition! No, that one went in a totally different direction. <laughs> Judged at 3,000 feet and I'm not going to argue with him. Launching gliders by towing them up behind a powered model aircraft is a fairly new skill. Once in the air, the released glider is controlled by radio, just like the other planes. Of course, there's always one lonely soul with no friendly pilots prepared to give him a tow. Get your water get your water on all time. Let's just see how long you can keep the air. This is a long slot, so we've got time. You're doing it. Somebody else is there right now. Well caught, sir. And Steve Holland will say he's been here. The aim of this manic session was to cut your opponent's trailing ribbon with your own plane. Some would say, grown men playing with little boys' toys. <laughs> hey, come on! And is now Eric the Viking. And if you have a look at Eric the Viking on top of the one that's farthest out, he will occasionally wave his battle axe at you. Excuse me, it's not Eric. And finally, the event the kids in the audience have been waiting for all day, the famous Wood Spring Toffee Drop. The route of the long swim, which has been running now for 84 years, has been changed from time to time. But nowadays it is swum from Lady Bay to the main beach, a distance of approximately a mile. The race is organised by the open water section of the Cleveland Swimming Club, which was itself formed in 1929 with the opening of the Marine Lake. In attendance to oversee safety and deal with any emergencies are members of the Clevedon Canoe Club. Before the 45 swimmers who have entered for this year's race can enter the water, a few brief instructions are given by the race organiser, Jenny Ellis. When you swim out, you can see the pier, but you will see a fluorescent yellow marker on there. It does not matter which span you go through, but it is suggested that the easiest are between spans two or three. The finish point, there is a large lower board. Please touch the boys and shout your number.
The start was under the control of Brian Bewley, who is an amateur swimming association open water referee. They start in two phases. First, the faster swimmers. Despite the beautiful sunshine, the sea in the channel was rather choppy, which gave all the swimmers a challenge as they set a course for Clevedon's Victorian Pier. A sizeable crowd were encamped on the main beach, including some who seemed to think that it was party time and had brought along their rather antisocial barbecues. Finally, the first swimmer appeared under the arches of the pier. Many identified him as Tom Jones, who powered onwards to be the first swimmer to cross the line and take the men's trophy. He was closely followed by Zach Holdaway, who took the top spot for the junior wetsuit category. Lizzie Warnes battled the waves to take the ladies' Rose Bowl trophy and Livy Finney repeated another great open water performance to be awarded the Junior Girls Trophy. The market at Seeley's in Hill Road was first opened for two days a week in March, but even then the ambition was to branch out into other commodities. 
and also to open their doors on more days in the week. So this, their first vintage and antiques fair, seems to be a logical step in the success that is clearly following this venture. Demands on our local food bank increasing, the organisers were again out in the aisles of Tesco supermarket in Clevedon, encouraging shoppers to buy a couple of extra items to donate for someone who is in need in these difficult times. Numbers are going up um, for various reasons. Uh, this year so far we've fed uh, over 500 people since the beginning of the year. Um, we, we are expecting to feed well over a thousand people uh, in 2013. And, and is that regularly, weekly or...? No, um, our aim is to feed people in crisis, in emergency, and of the people that visit us, around about 70% only come once, and then, and then they go and they obviously get their longer term problems sorted out. So, so we're always looking uh, to signpost people to agencies that can help with longer term problems. Cleveland's food bank is always happy to receive donations, either of money or of suitable food items. Their depot on the Heather Green Industrial Estate is open on Monday and Friday mornings from 12 o'clock till 2. We've got a little uh, a crib sheet for people. Uh, which tells them what to what what we're particularly in need of. It's staples really. Um, anything non-perishable, uh, long life milk, long life juice, sugar, uh, tea, coffee, uh, tinned meat, tinned vegetables. Instant mashed potato is something that people get surprised at, but it's a very easy and quick 
vegetable for people to prepare. Um, cereals, and as I say, this time of year, with children in mind, just, just a few treats for kids, which they really can enjoy. Um, those are the things we're, we're, we're asking for, and those are the things we're getting. Thank you. A new distribution point has recently been opened at the Gordano Valley Church office in Coombe Road, Porter's Head. It opens on Fridays again from 12 till 2. In this area, low income is a, is a, is a difficulty. So you have people in work, uh, but they find it hard to make ends meet at the best of times. And then a, a bill comes along, an unexpected bill perhaps, comes along and that, and that throws them. Particularly this time of year, we've got some holidays coming up and families find it difficult when kids are at home and they've got to feed them. The sad thing is we're seeing more families and therefore children uh, are, well, of course, in a family, the parents always say it's the children who, who are fed first. And so the children are fed and it's the parents who are saying, well, we're getting by on one meal a day or something like this. And so. That's a, that's a very sad aspect. Throughout the weekend, whilst the group of volunteers were collecting at Tesco's, Another group were busy down at the YMCA Hall in Marson Road, sorting out the hundreds of donations into various categories before they moved it all down to their depot in Hither Green. So what do you think about this then? I think it's brilliant. I think people of Cleveland are really generous and this should keep us going, we hope. And then later on we'll get the harvest in and again in, coming up to Christmas we'll get some more. So I hope this will keep us going because numbers of people coming to the food bank have doubled in the last three months. It could be said that it happened last January, but it was probably the constant battering of the weather coming up the Bristol Channel during the last hundred years which caused the damage. One of the six decorative panels below the roof just came adrift. An expert inspection of the remaining panels, seen here from the inside of the roof space, found them to be well attached and recommended that only the damaged panel should be replaced. It wasn't until May that the insurance and funding issues had been sorted out by North Somerset Council with the assistance of the Cleveland Civic Society and work then started on replacing the missing panel. Meanwhile, down below, any band who wished to play were forced to choose another place to sit. By June, the initial rendering of the broken panels was pretty much finished and the design of the original pattern was then carefully drawn onto the smooth lime surface. On the 25th of June, the lime surface of the panel was scribed and was then left to dry out fully, and given this recent fine weather, that shouldn't take all that long. The design that was on the missing seaward side panel can be seen on the roadside panel directly opposite. But meanwhile any band booked to give a concert on the promenade is being forced to find alternative accommodation.